Yo, what's up guys, Ghost here, and today I thought we would talk about and address some of the new leaks, rumours, confirmations about the new Battlefield game that have come to light recently in the recent EA earnings call, and also in some leaks from people like Tom Henderson, who has been renowned for leaking correct information for the Battlefield franchise and the Call of Duty franchise, among others. So, first of all, in the EA earnings call, we'll start with that stuff. It's pretty much been confirmed that the game is going to be revealed this spring and then released in holiday 2021, so that's probably around the October-November area. Now, this spring is a pretty, you know, large area to speak about. That could be in April, it could be March, it could be May, but I would guess that we're going to see some sort of a small teaser or at least, you know, the name of the game, just like a dun 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 dun, -dun and boom, Battlefield or whatever the game is going to be called. I think we're going to see something like that in March. Hopefully it's going to be more than just the name of the game and we're actually going to get a little tease of the art style of the game, what it looks like, if it actually is modern for sure. The more information, the better. And I think we can all agree, the sooner, the better as well. Now, the release date of holiday, October, November-ish is pretty typical for a Battlefield game. Hopefully it's going to be on the earlier side given the extra amount of time that DICE have had to create the game though. Now next thing up is the larger player count. So in the earnings call they quote said that there will be more players than ever before. So this doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be 128 players which is what we've all been talking about for months and even years now. That's just the most obvious number because last time there was an increase in Battlefield player size, it doubled from 32 players up to 64 players. That doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the case now though. And you know, I think one of the points I wanted to discuss here is whilst, you know, having more players in a game sounds cool, it's not necessarily the fact that more players is going to be better. I think there definitely is going to be a point where if you keep doubling the player count in Battlefield, eventually it's not going to be any more fun and it's just going to get annoying. You have to think of it, I think, from the perspective of this isn't Warzone. I know a lot of people will compare this to Warzone and say, oh, well, they've got, you know, 150 players. Yes, that's true, but you're only in a maximum team size or a squad size there of, what is it, four or five players, right? So whenever you bump into an enemy player, guess what? You're going to be going up against them. In Battlefield, you're going to have, let's say there is 128 players, you're going to have 63 teammates. So you could have you know, just a massive amount of players concentrated on one objective. Imagine if a bomb goes off there, you know, a jet pilot like myself drops a jade on there, he could just be getting, you know, a 10 piece. So I'm not really sure it's necessarily a good thing to increase the player size exponentially. But anyway, that's a topic for a whole other video. Next thing is that Battlefield 6 is going to take full advantage of next generation consoles with new features. I think that one was pretty obvious. There's also a rumour going around that they have a separate company that they've outsourced the work on the older generation consoles to, which if true, I think that is definitely uh, a good thing because then that means DICE can duckle down and focus on the next gen consoles, which is obviously going to be the future. They also said that it will be featuring maps with unprecedented scale and the next vision of Battlefield takes all the destruction, player agency and vehicle and weapon combat that the franchise is known for and elevates it to another level. So that doesn't really tell us a whole lot, I think that's pretty much a given, bigger, better, more explosions, etc. So the next thing I wanted to touch on is what people are generally calling a Levolution 2.0. For a while here on the channel we've been talking about the possibilities of destruction for the next Battlefield game and just what that will entail. But recently we've heard rumours that basically every single building on the map is going to be destructible. Okay, maybe not every single building, you know, for example, large buildings that house objectives or very prominent buildings that you just need to not mess up the flow of the game, those can't be destroyed, but most of them can. And what's more, it's not going to be a scripted destruction, like say where the siege of Shanghai Tower falls down in one direction, you'll be able to topple it in multiple directions depending on how the explosion goes off and where you actually attack the building from. Now this sounds pretty cool, but once again, I think we have to think about this, and me as a vehicular player mainly, I think about this as what will this mean for, you know, people flying around in jets, what will it mean for people flying around the scout helis, and what will this mean for the infantry players on the ground who are basically their prey. Take a map like Dawnbreaker, for example, there are two stealth jets on that map. In my opinion, 
they're pretty useless. I don't really understand why DICE put two stealth jets on that map, but imagine all of a sudden you could smash all of those skyscrapers, you could demolish a lot of them, and it was pretty much ground zero. Those jets would probably be a lot more useful, right? But on the flip side, all of those buildings being up make it a fantastic map for the scout helicopter. Now, once all of those buildings go down, it basically just turns into Gullmud Railway. I mean, the scout helicopter isn't going to have anywhere to line of sight lock-ons and use its ECM. It's not going to be able to line of sight the AA tank, and it's pretty much going to be screwed. So I suppose, you know, if you take that map as an example, it could completely change the flow of the map in terms of which vehicles are on top and which ones are at the bottom. You guys will notice that it's the city maps, the ones with all the skyscrapers, you know, the ones with buildings that you can hide behind, like Zavod, you have the large building in the middle that you can hide behind that as a scout heli pilot. Those are the maps where the helicopters are dominating. Most of the maps where the jets dominate is where it's pretty much wide open and you can easily strafe the infantry and vehicles on the ground and they're not obstructed by any buildings. So I think it will be interesting to see if that rumour is actually correct or if it's just people exaggerating a little bit. I hope the destruction is of course better than it was in Battlefield 4 and I'm sure we are going to see some form of Levolution 2.0 but I hope you can't completely demolish a map because that would really ruin the flow of them. Okay, next thing is the new rumour about units. So what is a unit you might be asking? Well, as you know, Battlefield currently has squads which are groups of a maximum of four players that can play together. Units are apparently supposed to be a collection of squads. So let's say a squad has four players and you have, you know, four squads within a unit. That unit is going to be a collection of 16 players. But apparently it's rumored that it could be three squads in a unit or even five squads. It's not really confirmed yet. And of course, this is just a rumor, but I think this is probably a good idea. Let's just assume for the sake of mathematics here that you definitely will have 128 players in the next Battlefield game. That's a lot of squads. That's 16 squads in the entire game, and it's going to be eight squads in each team. So maybe they're going to split those up into two or even four units. I think this also may point to the fact that Commander Mode will be coming back. At the moment, the way Commander Mode works in Battlefield 4 is that you can tell entire squads to go and attack objectives or defend or attack units and targets. But all of a sudden, when you have a billion squads to control, that's not going to be so easy. So I can definitely see, you know, the unit here being used instead of the squads. I definitely think that's a good thing. Hopefully this points to more strategizing and target calling for the commander. Okay, and finally we have uh, the newest rumor that there is going to be a free-to-play element and a battle pass for Battlefield. Not quite sure how I feel about this one. Obviously, Call of Duty has seen massive success with their free-to-play version of Call of Duty Warzone, and it looks like Battlefield is gearing up to do much the same thing. I don't think they're going to scrap the main Battlefield multiplayer mode and just have a Warzone Battle Royale type experience, but I think they could do something similar to what Call of Duty is doing at the moment. After all, you guys will notice that Battlefield and Call of Duty, you know, they pretty much copy each other in a lot of ways. When there were no vehicles in Battlefield and it was all about World War II, Call of Duty capitalized on that and they started implementing their own vehicles like modern tanks and helicopters into their game. That wasn't a coincidence. I'm pretty sure that was because Battlefield wasn't doing that at the time and they wanted to fill that niche. Now you might say, okay, what's what's the harm in that, you know, if you've got the main base multiplayer version of the game? Well, for me, it will be that there is a possibility that this will split the player base massively. At the moment, way more people play Warzone than the people who play the base Modern Warfare multiplayer. And the reason for that is because it's absolutely free. So whoever your friends are, you know, however much money they have to spend on gaming, you can all grab this free version of Call of Duty and play it together, right? And if Battlefield goes that same way, the exact same thing is bound to happen there. So I'm not quite sure if this is going to be the best thing. There was a lot of talk when Battlefield had premium and you had DLCs coming out. So you would buy a DLC, get access to everything in that DLC, such as the maps, and then you could only play on the servers that included those maps. But the people who had the base game weren't able to join you. And there was a lot of talk at those times about them splitting the player base. So, you know, in a way, I kind of hope this 
isn't true. I'm not a massive Battle Royale fan, many of you guys will know that, but I'm well aware of the fact that a lot of people do love Battle Royale. But let me know down below in the comments, guys, would you like a Battle Royale mode for Battlefield if it was done well, or do you just want, you know, the base Battlefield multiplayer experience that we all know and love? As for the Battle Pass element, just, just please no, like, enough with the Battle Passes, man. I know that everybody's doing it, and I know it makes a ton of money, and it's probably complete folly for me to, to even bother saying this to EA, because of course they want to make more money, but uh, just, I, I don't like Battle Passes, man. I don't. I prefer Premium. If we could just get Premium back instead of Battle Passes, that would be, that would be great, EA. Also, just thought I'd throw this in here, a little screenshot capture from Battlefield HQ of a vote on Battlefield 6 versus Battlefield 6. Do we write it with Roman numerals or do we write it with regular numbers? Please go with the regular numbers. Do you guys know how many times I have to type in the word Battlefield 6 into every YouTube video? Every single tag, every single title. It's so annoying to have to use Roman numerals, man. Come on, guys. Anyway, guys, that is going to be it for today. Hope you enjoyed this one. Leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section. You know, it is interesting to see your guys' thoughts as well as mine because, like I mentioned in the video, I'm more of a vehicle player, not much of an infantry player. So I'm only looking at this really from my perspective. But what do you guys think? You know, what would you think of these changes of the evolution, destruction, etc.? Maybe from an infantry player's perspective? Leave me all that good stuff and I'll try and answer as many of you guys as I can. Leave a like down below if you enjoyed, subscribe for more Battlefield 6 information, and I hope you have a good weekend. Cheers!